Zero Accounting Software 2023 Credit Card Reconciliation Month Number One. Get ready to become an accountant hero with Zero 2023. First, a word from our sponsor. Well, actually, these are just items that we picked from the YouTube Shopping Affiliate Program, but that's actually good for you because these aren't things that were just given to us from some large corporation which we don't even use in exchange for us selling them to you. These are things that we actually researched, purchased, and used ourselves. Focusrite Scarlet Solo 3rd Gen USB Interface with Software Suite. I've been using a Focusrite for years for my audio needs, before which time I had a USB microphone which plugged directly into the computer. But I think you'll find, as I have found, if you want to increase the quality of your microphone, you will need an interface, and the Focusrite is the go-to interface as far as I'm concerned. I've been using this for years now. It works well, it's easy to use, it seems quite durably built. Because I only do the screen recordings, I only need the one solo interface. However, if you have multiple microphones you need to plug in, or if you have other instruments you need to plug in, you can look at a similar model that has more input ports. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com where we have many different courses. You can purchase one at a time or have a subscription model giving you access to all the courses. Courses which are well organized have other resources like Excel files and PDF files to download and no commercials. Here we are in our custom Zero homepage going into the company file we set up in a prior presentation, the bank feed file. We're going to duplicate some tabs to put those reports in as done every time. Right click it on the tab to duplicate it. And then that duplicate a tab, we're going to duplicate it again. Right click and double duplicate it. Then we're going to go back to that tab to the middle. Accounting drop down. Open up one of the famous reports. The big balance sheet report needs no introduction. Everybody knows the balance sheet when it walks into the room. Hit the drop down again. The other one, it's buddy, it's pair. The profit and loss or the income statement. Let's change the range. I'm going to now be going up through August this time because we're going to do a bank reconciliation for the credit card through August. So it's going to go 2022, bringing it uh, from January. Let's keep it at January 1st to 2022 and August 31. Update it. Let's go to the middle tab now. And we're going to change the date range on this one to August as well. So I'm going to customize this one, dropping it down on the months, bringing it to August and 31. Update that one. Let's go to the first tab and recall that we connected to the bank feeds. We've been doing our bank uh, information uh, populating from the bank feeds, accounting drop down, bank accounts. Now, the thing we want to note here is when we first add the data, whether that be the data from the checking account or the credit card account, it's only adding the data for the current time frame. We're not picking up the ending balances. Some people get like kind of frustrated with that at first because when we go to our, for example, we're looking at our credit card here, but we'll look at the checking account having a similar situation in a future presentation. So a lot of times if I say, okay, I'm going into my credit card, and here's all the information that pulled through on the reconciliation. I've reconciled everything here. Therefore, my ending balance should be correct on the balance sheet. So if I go to my credit card, I should have a, a, a credit card balance as of the date of August 31st, 2022. That's important. And note, this is also why when you, when you actually do the reconciliations or think about reconciling, you have to think about it as of a certain point in time. So we want to be reconciling as of a certain point in time, usually not the current day. Although in some cases, like with the credit cards, you might be able to do it on a day-to-day -day basis due to the fact that you're constructing your books directly from the credit card statements. But if you have any reconciling items, then you're typically going to do the standard thing, reconciling it monthly, reconciling items being outstanding items, usually on the checking account side of things we'll talk about later, like outstanding checks or outstanding deposits, things that you know about, but the bank does not know about. 
the credit card is a good lead up into the reconciliations for the bank accounts because the credit cards usually don't have any outstanding items because we're constructing our entire books directly from uh, the credit card statements. However, when we first do the first credit card statement, it usually won't tie out. I'll have something like this. Here's 47729. And if I go over here, the ending balance is 52271. Uh, this is my mock uh, my, my mock credit card uh, statement. So we didn't have much activity here at the beginning one. But the, the, the charges we made were down here. This is the ending balance. What's the problem? Well, the problem is we don't have the beginning balance. Now, again, a lot of people look at the, the bank feeds and say, well, that sh it should be able to figure that out. It should be able to just give me the balance because it knows the ending balance because it's connected to the bank. Why doesn't it just give me the ending balance? And the reason is because accounting software isn't designed to just give you the ending balance. It's designed to give you all the detail because what you really want to do is use the detail to either verify the data input that you have done or create the data input, not only creating the balance sheet in the process, but also the income statement. So, so Zero can't just say, I'm just gonna pull in the ending balance and make it correct, because then it would lose the detail that, that is creating the double entry accounting system. So you, there are other softwares that can do that, financial software, can do that. I think there used to be like a personal capital, like online software, and there was a, you know, there's other softwares that you can even do it in, a, in some forms of Excel, I think, actually pull in the ending balances from your financial institutions, such as banks, such as other financial institutions, investment institutions, like an E-Trade and that kind of stuff. And that'll give you a, a balance sheet based on the current value of your information from the financial institutions. What it won't give you, however, is an income statement, right? And so that's what the accounting software is trying to do, give you the income statement through the bank feeds, but br bringing in the detail. Okay, so, so we have this beginning balance issue. So what is the beginning balance issue? It's the beginning balance. We're missing the beginning balance in the data because I had information that was charged to the credit card before I started adding it to my current accounting. So either that was from the prior accounting system or maybe it was a personal credit card before and now I'm making it like a business credit card or something like that. So I have to deal with this beginning balance issue. Let's see that in the reconciliation process. So if I go to the first tab, I can I could say, okay, how am I gonna fix this? Cause, because I, I'm, it says I'm reconciled, but the statement balance is wrong. So how am I gonna fix this? Let's take a look at the, at the actual reconciliation report. So to do that, I'm gonna go to the tab to the right, right click and duplicate it. And Zero has a pretty neat reconciliation report that you can kind of see it being constructed as, as you go, which is, is pretty neat because the reconciliation reports are a little bit different than other reports, accounting dropdown reports. Like if you do this in other accounting software, like a QuickBooks Online, for example, sometimes the, the, the reconciliation reports look a little bit different uh, and, and our function or pull up as like a PDF file. Let's do bank reconciliation, bank reconciliation. So we're looking for the bank reconciliation report. And all right, so to do this, however, this is, we're gonna say that this is gonna be for August. So I'm gonna say, so that I'm gonna pick up the date range of my statement over here, which is August. So I'm gonna say 2022, Jan through uh, 2022 of August 31. The bank account that we're looking at is the credit card. Now, the tricky thing here is you're gonna manually input the, the, the ending balance from the credit card statement. Now, this is kind of designed because it's the same thing from a bank statement to a credit card statement. So this being from a credit card statement, you're, you're, it's going to be a negative balance because because it's it's going to be a liability. So so we have a negative balance of five two two seven one. So I'm going to say negative five two two seven one uh, point seven one five two two point seven one, and then we'll update it. And here's our bank reconciliation report. So it says here we have the the balance in zero is uh, 477.29. That's what's on our balance sheet, 477.29.
and then there's no outstanding payments and outstanding receipts. That's because we checked everything off. There's nothing outstanding. In a credit card, there will almost never be anything outstanding because we're usually gonna be constructing our books directly from the information from the credit card statement. Therefore, we're gonna add all the information in, which is different than a bank reconciliation, in which case we might have reconciling items such as outstanding checks and outstanding deposits we'll touch on later. So in that way, the credit card is way easier. Uh, and But then we got the statement balance that has been calculated, which is, is off, from the actual statement balance, 52271. There's the actual statement balance, 52271. It's a negative. The difference between the two, because this is a negative pot, is $1,000, which of course is the beginning balance. We're off by the beginning balance. What do we need to do then? We need to add the beginning balance. All right, so let's go back on over. That should be easy enough to do, should it not? Let's go to the first tab. Now I'm in the credit card, just to double check that accounting dropdown, we're in the bank information, and then we're in the credit card right here. And now I'm in the account transactions in the credit card. And I'm gonna say we want a new transaction, new transaction, and it's gonna be a, a new spend money. Remember that the spend money form for the credit cards means that we're spending money like we don't have. So it's gonna be an increase to the liability instead of a decrease to the asset of cash, increase the credit card liability. So, so uh, note that I'm just gonna enter the beginning balance as like a generic lump sum. You could go back to the prior transactions that generated the $1,000 and try to see what they were for and kind of recreate them. But oftentimes we're gonna say, hey, look, I'm gonna make my accounting system as of this point going forward. If I wanna look at the prior stuff, then I can look at my prior accounting system. So. I'm just gonna say uh, that this is gonna be a generic or miscellaneous. Let's just make a miscellaneous contact uh, and then tab. And then this is gonna be as of the beginning. So it's a beginning balance. So I'm gonna bring it back to 2000. Bring it on back. To, so to uh, August 1st, 2022. And then uh, no item description, I'll say beginning balance and then the account that we wanted to go to now if we had the one thousand dollars that we were using for business in the prior period and we're just setting up the beginning balances then it might go into say uh, retained earnings for example because it would have rolled through the income statement and then gone into the equity section of retained earnings and note that you usually want to do this start your new company file like at the beginning of the year like in january instead of the middle of the year so you have a whole year of information in the current year and then your beginning balance information you could put into the prior period so it rolls in to the current period or just directly to a balance sheet account it might also be the case or it could be the case that you had the the credit card as personal before and now you switched it over to business or something like that in which case the prior purchases on the credit card would be for uh for personal use uh which would be like a draw right it would still be like an equity uh kind of account because it would be like in the equity section so either way we're going to say it's going to be an an equity type of account and i'm going to put it just in directly into equity uh let's see equity retained earnings so i'm going to put it right into the retained earnings and so and you want to be careful hitting retained earnings but with the beginning balances that's the exception to the general rule all right let's save it and an error occurred until the price i need an amount that's important a thousand dollars one thousand thank you zero for uh pointing that out for me transaction has been saved let's go to the balance sheet and check out k paso what happened k in the world paso round here so uh then if i go down we're gonna say that the credit card has now flipped back to the proper balance of a liability instead of an asset i'm gonna go into it because now we owe money right it's properly owing money the credit card company never owes us money typically unless something strange is happening 
And so we're gonna say there's the, the uh, 1000. So this is all the activity that is happening. So if I'm checking off the activity to my bank statement now, I could say, okay, there's the thousand dollars, checks off, check it off, and I and I've reconciled that, boom, and there's the four seven seven checks off, bam, and therefore I have the ending balance of five two two seven one five two two seven one. I can also look at that from a reconciliation standpoint, jumping on over here and go to the accounting drop down and go to the bank accounts. I'm already in there, but I'll do it again just because it's fun, okay? I like doing that. So then if I go into here and I look at uh, August, let's let's go and see if I can rearrange this. August, we, we have the activity that's happening. If I'm checking this off, I can check it off here too. So I'm just gonna go, that checks off, that checks off in August, so I should, be reconciled in my report except that this one has not been reconciled yet we entered it on our side but it hasn't cleared the bank that almost never happens with the credit card because usually we construct our books from the credit card and this is the only time it will happen because from this point forward we will be constructing our books from the credit card before we fix that let's take a look at the bank reconciliation if i update the bank rec now we've got the zero balance at 522 uh, seven one. That's what's on the balance sheet. Let's back it up so I can see it uh, on the balance sheet this way. And we're going to scroll it down. So five, two, two, seven, one, five, two, two, seven, one. And then we've got the outstanding amount. Why is it outstanding? Because we haven't checked it off yet. So that's a reconciling item to get to the to get to the statement balance. And then we've got the bank balance ending balance and so the the calculation of out of balance is the one thousand dollars so what i what i'm going to do now is make this part reconciled which will add it to the bank side of things which hopefully will clear this up so let's go back to the first tab and say all right that bit right there we want to uh reconcile it so one way you could do this you got to force the reconciliation I'm gonna go into it and then you have your options up top and I'm gonna say uh, mark it as reconciled. When I mark it as reconciled, it's gonna add it to the bank side of things. Again, this isn't normally what you do. You, you're not gonna have to do this going forward because remember, all of your information is coming from the bank. So you already have that information. So it's not, you're, it shouldn't have a system where if something is on our side and it hasn't cleared the bank unless they're outstanding items in which case we don't check them off until they clear the bank which will happen in the future but in this case it's not an outstanding item it's the beginning balance that's not in the system that is there from the prior period right so 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 that's the exception to the rule that we're going to add this on the bank side of things and then we're never going to have to do that again so i'm going to say let's mark it as reconciled and uh, it is recommended that you only mark as reconciled in cases where you are the original bank transaction data cannot be imported. So that's the case right here because it's the beginning balance. We didn't import the original bank transaction data. So if I go to the accounting drop down again, bank accounts and back into the credit to the card, uh, we go into the credit card. We could see it's reconciled now. We still have everything reconciled uh, up front. And so that looks good. Now this balance is as of October 11th, so we can't really go by that. We could go to the reconciliation report now. And if I update the report, we have a very bland report, right? We have the zero balance, which is now 52271. If I go to the balance sheet, it's still the 52271. The fact that we reconciled it didn't change. We didn't record anything new by doing that. We recorded it on the bank side of things, not on our side. Uh, of things again so no, no new transaction if i go into this we have the same detail uh uh that we had before and that's my beginning balance over here and then there's no outstanding items because we don't have any checks that we wrote that didn't clear we didn't enter any transactions on our side that didn't clear because we're 
completely dependent on the bank, in this case, for the credit card to do that. We will have outstanding balances possibly in the checking account, depending on the industry that we are in. That's why the credit card should be easier once you fix this beginning balance issue. The statement balance is 52271. Uh, this is what's been calculated, which is this, and, and then taking into account outstanding items. And that matches what we actually typed in as the bank balance, which comes from the credit card statement and therefore uh, we're in balance. Now, this is the bank reconciliation. So, so it says out of balance, nothing, right? So this is the bank reconciliation report. If you were an auditor was to come in and say, I want a bank reconciliation report, this is the kind of thing that you would provide to them. However, with the credit card, because we're constructing from the bank, we shouldn't really have any differences between our books and the banks at any given time. So we're just going to still do the reconciliation possibly monthly just to verify that we've we haven't we've got the beginning balance situation handled and we don't have any uh, double duplicate transactions that have been entered and we don't have any transactions that have not been entered in which case our balance will be out of balance. Now you can kind of check that just kind of as you go over here because because again your balance should be pretty much correct real time on your balance sheet because we don't have any outstanding items and uh and that's what leads people to to come to the conclusion that we don't need bank reconciliations at all anymore but we're still doing this is still like a bank reconciliation it just basically means that we don't have any outstanding items because again we're constructing our books from the bank which means we're kind of cheating you know on the on the accounting because usually the bank in a full service accounting system should be a double check, not something that we're relying on to construct the books. But because the timing differences is so short, we can kind of do that. Now, when you go to the, to the, to the, so in the future, we won't have the beginning balance issue. So everything from this point forward should, should go forward very easily and the reconciliation should be quite easy. Uh, also note when we go to the checking account, uh, then you might be in some industries where we're in the same situation where you just construct your books from the bank balance. But as we saw when we did the data input, anytime you have those accrual components involved or anytime you're dealing with actual physical checks, then you might have to deviate from relying on the bank to construct your books, in which case it's far more likely, even if you have electronic transfers, to have some timing differences, things that you entered on your side that haven't cleared the bank, outstanding checks or outstanding payments, even if electronic, that you've entered on your side or outstanding receipts, uh, things that you've received and entered on your side that the bank hasn't cleared yet. And those are gonna be those reconciling items we'll take a look at in future presentations.